On the 30th of July, 1858, a European explorer by the name of John Speke set his eyes on Lake Nalubale, as the Baganda called it, or the Ukarewe Sea, according to the Arabs. It was his belief that this vast expanse of pale blue waters, as he described it, was the source of the Nile. He was right. And of course, the locals already knew that. But Speke was never able to prove it to his fellow Europeans in his lifetime, despite a second journey to... <sighs> darkest Africa. What he had seen was a tiny tip of an enormous lake in the southern part. The actual source of the Nile, correction, one of the sources of the Nile is in a city called Jinja, or as the Basoga call it, Adinda. Basoga means people of Basoga, the subject of my next series of episodes. The Kingdom of Busoga is a small monarchy located in eastern Uganda. It's a relatively new kingdom, being that it was established in 1906. Before that, it consisted of a number of smaller states, up to 68 in fact. Each of these had their own ruler with their own territory, although many others existed within the spheres of influence of their larger neighbors. They identify themselves using Abaise, then the name of their people. For example, Abaise Ngobi, Abaise Mena, Abaise Chema, Abaise Musupo, Abaise meaning those of the forefather of, then the name of the founder. So Abaise Mena translates to those of the forefather Mena. The name Busoga came to refer to all these states in the 19th century. This was, according to D.W. Cohen, done by the British in the Baganda. Probably after seeing how many groups of people they had to deal with, I imagine their eyes sort of just glazed over and they were like, ah, they're, they're all Busoga. Originally, it was a name of a hill in south-central Uganda, and then it was a name of a smaller state along the Nile near today's city of Jinja. It was then expanded to refer to the land bordered by Lake Choga to the north, the Impologoma River to the east, the Victoria Nile to the west, and Lake Victoria to the south. As you can see, the kingdom of Busoga is surrounded almost entirely by water. If you're into extreme water sports... This is definitely the place for you. You can go whitewater rafting, whitewater tubing, and bungee jumping over the River Nile. Experience activities on this historical river as it begins its journey north to the Mediterranean Sea. As for me, I'm a natural coward and will not be joining you. Now, <laughs> look at me, I'm already turning this into commercial for the kingdom. Now, like I did with Bunyoro, I'm going to start from the beginning, or at least try, you see, given the nature of this kingdom, with 68 states, there's no way that I can tell you the history of all these places, nor do I have it or have access to it. However, Wasoga believe that their history began with two people, Chintu and Mukama, two Adamic figures. One, Chintu, the mysterious figure, is credited as the founding father of big kingdoms like Bunyoro and Buganda. In Busoga, he's believed to be the one responsible for the formation of the southern states in the kingdom. Mukama, on the other hand, is the father figure of the northern Busoga polities. Now, there are numerous stories about these two. While most of these tales remain similar, others are, are quite different. For example, Mukama and Chintu are not always two separate people. Sometimes they're combined into one man and called Mukama Chintu. And this individual accomplishes the same tasks that both are said to have done separately. In other instances, these two are contemporaries, traveling together and then eventually splitting to pursue their own ventures. But for the most part, they are considered to be different people. And it is with that that I present to you the first episode in the Busoga series, The Many Chiefdoms of Busoga, Chintu, and Mukama. to pick the most famous folk hero in Uganda, it would be Chintu. Everyone in Uganda knows the tale of Chintu, the first in Uganda and first man on earth, the trials he underwent to win the acceptance of Gulu so he could marry his daughter. There's even a novel by Jennifer Nasu Gamakumbi loosely based on him and titled, well, Chintu. I recommend it. It's got good reviews, although I haven't personally read it. So who was this man? Spoiler alert, we don't have any definitive answers. What I have for you 
are theories. In order to get to know Chintu, we have to look at what the Waganda have to say about him, because that's where you'll find the bulk of the information about him. So let me tell you a story. Now for Ugandans, forgive me, I know you've heard this a million times, but once upon a time, God, by the name of Guru, or Heaven, said to Chintu, his grandchild, Go down to earth with your your wife, Nabi, and produce children. children. But Gulu warned him, when you go down there, there, do not take your brother brother Wolumbe with you. you. Quick side note. In most stories, Wolumbe is Chintu's brother-in-law, and Chintu is not the grandchild of Gulu. Okay. Gulu continues to say, make sure you wake up early and leave before he can see you, because if he comes with you, he will kill your children. Chintu agreed. And at daybreak, him and his wife Nambi scurried out of their house and left. But as they were walking, Nambi remembered, Stop, 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 Chintu. I forgot the millet for my hands on the porch. But Chintu replied, You cannot go back. Walumbe will see you. But Nambi insisted and then turned back. She gets to the house, finds the millet on the porch, and suddenly, there is Walumbe. Eh, hey, where are you going, my friend? Are you leaving without me? Nambi must have hesitated at this moment and said, Oh, nonsense, Walumbe. I was just, uh, you, you know, I was, I, I was looking for you. Ah, uh, yes, I was looking for you. Come, uh, come with me. Let's go. Okay, I think I will. And then Walumbe followed Nambi, much to her dismay. When Chintu saw Nambi and Walumbe, he ran to Gulu and told him that Walumbe was coming with them. Gulu replied, did I not Did tell, I tell you to tell leave Ali in the morning? Go, 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 go. Don't plead with me. Chintu was annoyed by Gulu's response. He then went to his wife and chastised her. God damn it, woman. It was you who brought me Walumbe. It was you who has killed me. Nambi must have shouted back with something along the lines of, I tell what did you want me to do? Leave the millet and let our chicken starve? There was nothing else to do at that point but continue the journey. And so they went to Earth. They had their children and Walumbe killed him, just like Gulu had said. The end. We're going to dissect the story in a little bit, but first let me just say that there are multiple versions of the story. So if you're like, hey, this ain't the way the story goes, that's why. But the core message is there. Chintu leaves heaven with his wife Nambi and is then followed by her brother, Walumbe, death. In this story, he is somewhat of a deity, being described as the grandchild of Gulu, heaven himself. In some instances, as D.W. Cohen tells us, Chintu is variously identified as God and the Son of God, among other descriptions, which I must admit was new for me. The story I was familiar with was that he was human. But alas, not in all of them. According to Y.K. Lubogo, the principal historian on Basoga history, some Basoga in the Chugulu state, occupied by the Baisengobi, also shared this sentiment. They believe that Chintu descended from heaven with his wife and settled in an area called Uswikira, a perspective also shared by another Busoga clan, the Abaise Musuguro, which would also explain why he is one of three of the most important spirits in the Busoga traditional religion, the other two being his brother-in-law Walumbe and Mukama. In fact, at Uswikira, the hill where he landed at when descending from heaven, has two shrines. One half is home to Chintu's most important shrine, and on the other half, you'll find one to Alumbe. Chintu is a Musambo spirit, and a different one at that given not only his prominence, but also because the majority of the Musambo spirits are associated with nature, like stones, trees, hills, and reptiles such as pythons. However, in other tales of Chintu, he was a man who traveled to Busoga from the east from Mount Elgon. It's an extinct volcano mountain on the border of Kenya and Uganda. A mountain of such beauty with its lush forests, eye-catching trails and waterfalls. I mean, just look at this. Ah, oh yeah, look at that. Amazing. As you can tell, I really like nature. Now, Busoga traditions talk about Chintu coming from the east from Mount Elgon or western Kenya. He traveled with a group made up of lion and leopard clans. These two used to be one, the lion, but then separated and became the lion and the leopard. 
Later in his journey through Basoka, Chintu was joined by a lot of other clans, which include the otter, elephant, ludoiker, mushroom, lungfish, and up to a little more than 15 in total. Now, one of the stops they made was at a place called Buguru. This place was occupied by a group called the Abaise Igulu, and they were ruled by a leader who was given the spiritual title of Igulu. And it is here that Chintu marries Nambi. Buganda traditions claim that she belonged to the Kalabas Monkey Clan. Her brother Walume, as told by legend, is from the Lungfish Clan, and that he was somewhat associated with her clan. Maybe they had formed some type of alliance that made them close enough like siblings? Possible. However, in some Busoga traditions, it is stated that Chintu married a woman called Nambubi. Is Nambubi a different form of the name Nambi? I, I think so. I'd have to confirm. But Nambubi was said to be from the lungfish clan like Walumbe. In fact, the name Nambubi was, I don't know if it's still the case, the most common name given to the daughters of the lungfish clan throughout the islands of Buganda and Busoga. Chintu's marriage to Nambi slash Nambubi created an alliance between him and the lungfish clan. But Igulu was said to be apprehensive about this union, not because of Nambi, but because of her brother Walumbe. And so he advised Chintu to leave Bugulu quickly with his new bride and her followers. But for one reason or another, Nambi forgot about the millet for her hens and turned back to go get it, only to find her brother who inquired about where she was going. Walumbe follows and then an argument breaks out between these two groups, Chintu's Lion Leopard Lungfish Alliance and Walumbe's Lungfish Group. It's said that when they arrived at Usuikira Hill, the two groups are so fed up with each other that they camped on each half of the hill. And this is where you'll find their shrines today. These disputes were apparently over land, according to B.A. Ogot. This caused Walumbe's group to move a few miles away to a place called Bunyanirwa. So by this point, some of you will have began to put this together. The story told in legend is obviously a symbolic one. It is probable that the Igulu, heaven or god, in the stories is the Igulu of the Abaise Igulu. Therefore, Bugulu is the heaven they were talking about. So Chintu and his wife left heaven, Bugulu, and landed on earth in Busuikira. But they were followed by their arch nemesis Walumbe, or death, and he killed their children. See? It's pretty interesting, isn't it? Chintu would then proceed to what would become Buganda and go about establishing his stronghold in the region. According to Busoga tradition, Chintu left Buganda and went back to Busuikira where he died and was buried. Chintu's sons would go on to establish Busoga clans like the Abaise Chema and the Abaise Yumbwe of the polities of Bukasango, Bunyole, and Buchema on the lakeshore. Mukamba was the founder of the northern states of Busoga. These include Chigulu, Busiki, Buzaya, Bugabula, Iti, etc. It is often stated that like Chintu, he too came from the east, specifically from the foothills of Mount Elgon. The Bogo recounts that some say he came with lots of wives, children, servants, two dogs, and other animals. He was said to be a very skilled hunter and that he hunted lots of animals in this new land of Busoga. Mukama established himself and had sons to whom he gave pieces of land. These sons would come to be known as the Baisengobi. Each of them spurned dynasties that ruled over territories that I've mentioned before. Now, Mukama is usually unidentified. Like Chintu, he's got the whole mystery thing going on. Although some, like Sabalangra Gomotoka, which means Prince Gomotoka, believed him to be Omukama Cheibambe the Serpo Nyamutukura of Bunyoro from the early 19th century. For those of you who listen to my podcast, he's the king I told you about who ruled for such a long time that his sons began to plan his overthrow. Gomotoka relates that Nyamutukura came from the east on the Bukedi side with several of his children whom he placed in charge throughout the north of the country. 
However, that doesn't really make sense given that he is too late. A lot of these dynasties go back a lot further than the early 19th century. Also, if it had happened, the Banyoro would have validated that claim, but as it stands, the information recorded of him makes no mention of him being the founder of any Wasoga states. Two other kings of Bunyoro are speculated to have been the elusive Mukama. The first one, King Olimi I, who reigned in the early 1500s, was said to have traveled to Wasoga to quell a rebellion started by a few princes. He succeeded and installed others in their place. This king is also at the center of the Bahara Eclipse story of 1520 AD. This time period was known for its intense warfare between the kingdoms of Bunyoro, Buganda, and Nkore. Nkore in particular had suffered incredible losses of cattle to the Banyoro, to the point that it caused a famine called Eidrigenyonza. This famine was noteworthy given that men had to use wild berries as dowry to pay for brides. In that year, Omukama Olimi I attacked Rwanda and Impororo and left with huge amounts of BOOTE! Sorry. However, just as he was going over the Baharu Hill, the skies darkened as the moon slowly covered the sun. King Olimi and his men watched in horror and panicked. Believing this to be the work of the enemies they had just plundered, they dropped everything and fled for their lives. When the eclipse passed, the people of Nkore came out and found numerous cattle grazing on the hill. They were called Endugamuiguru, which literally means the cows that came from heaven. And with that, they were able to replenish their herds. Okay, the point I was getting at is that the 1500s is too early. If the lineage records are to be believed, most of the northern states show their lineage going back seven generations from 1899. Olimi would be 14 generations back. That's double. Still, Wunyora and Buganda traditions state that he invaded Busoga. To explain that, Cohen points out that the state known as Busoga at that time was a little one in the southwest near Jinja. It was ruled by the Ntembe line of the Reedbuck clan. It was this Busoga that Olimi invaded, not the northern lands. The other king, claimed to be Mukama, is called Winyi. Well, there are three of them who ruled before the 19th century, and there's not a lot of evidence to prove it was any one of them. But it is curious though, the name Mukama. Given that the word for king in Bunyoro is O Mukama, if you drop the O, you have Mukama. There is a connection there somewhere. And in fact, some say that Mukama never came to Busoga at all. He simply sent his children into Busoga, where they became rulers but always remembered the Omukama as their father. There's also a story that tells of one of Mukama's sons traveling to Bunyoro to bury their father when they heard about his death. Another tale records that Mukama passed through Busoga and continued to Bunyoro where he reigned as king. As you can see, the northern states of Lusoga have close cultural ties with Bunyoro. Their dialect of Lusoga, Lupakoyo, is similar to Bunyoro. And by the 19th century, many of them recognized the influence Bunyoro had over them, much like the southern states recognized that of Bugandas. Going as far as to seek the Kabakas, the king of Bugandas, approval in major matters of their nations. While we don't know exactly who Mukama was, we do know that he was connected to the wave of Luo migrations into Uganda around the 15th century. The Luo are a Nilotic ethnic group who live in East Africa. They are the fourth largest ethnic group in Kenya, but you can also find them in Uganda, Sudan, southwestern Ethiopia, among others. For clarity's sake, the Luo in Kenya and northern Tanzania are known as the Joluo, or Luo proper whereas the others go by other names, the Acholi, Shiluk, Anuak, etc., but they're all under the umbrella of Luo. So around the 15th century, many began to migrate south past Lake Choga and into the direction of Kenya. Some of these Luo groups are responsible for the origin of the Mukama mythos. Osoga historian Waike Lubogo tells us that Mukama traveled through Teso, Ugwere, and along the Mpologoma River and entered Bunyole, in eastern Uganda and then to the rest of the country. He found his way to Busoga where he stopped at Nangoma Hill in Bukoli. 
Historian B.A. Ogot noted that this travel itinerary matched up with his reconstruction of Luo migrations. In fact, he offered up the hypothesis that Bukama may be a personification of the Luo people. The Luo immigrants came into Busoga and merged with peoples already living there. An example of these groups includes the Bakena people, who were water nomads. They lived primarily on water systems like the Mpologma River, floating from place to place on huge rafts and canoes safe from the human danger on the land. A very interesting group of people. But by merging with the Luo, they came to form many groups that dotted across the northern landscape. Lastly, Mukama is also a deity. Just like Chintu, he too is a Musamba spirit. He was prayed to for the well-being and health of a newborn child. Any blemish or deformity on the baby was considered to be the work of Mukama. So, who was Mukama? We don't know. But I leave you with a quote from historian D.W. Cohen, which sort of sums up what we know about him. Open quotes. Mukama is the father of the princes who founded the great states across the northern face of Busoga. Mukama is the giver of all things. Mukama is the awaited one, the messiah looked to as the negotiator between this world and another. Mukama is the foreigner, the light-skinned figure, the bearer of new culture and political ideas. Mukama is the herdsman, the milker, the hunter, and the wanderer. Mukama is the cripple, the miscreant, the possessed one, both feared and respected. Mukama is the personification of cultural, ethnic, and political links between Busoga and Bunyoro. Mukama is the apotheosis of Ganda participation in and hegemony over Soga affairs. Close quotes. Thank you for watching. For those on the podcast, thank you for listening. My name is David Ibanda, and this is the show, Those Who Came Before Us.